you've just found yourself standing in front of a cardiac arrest patient and of course none of your lecturers ever bothered to teach you how to set up a simple volume ventilator, relax, I've got you covered. First I will show you exactly how to set the machine up, then I will break down what each setting actually means and I will share some personal insights into mechanical ventilation in the pre-hospital setting. You know, the, the kind of stuff no AI or textbook will ever tell you. Let's get to it. White hose, plug it into the oxygen supply. Respiratory rate, set it to 10. Air mix, switch it to no air mix. Tidal volume, you want 600 ml. Pressure alarm, Turn it to 60 times 100 PA. Bottom knob, switch it to CMV demand. Now connect the semi-transparent line to the tube or IGEL. Make sure your ETC O2 sensor and filter are in place always. That's it. You've just set up a ventilator faster than most people can even unfold a BVM. Now you can stop bugging and start thinking. Sir, stay calm. Here is an uncomfortable truth. You are way more likely to harm a patient with a badly used BVM than with a ventilator. I know this. Um, many years ago, my poor BVM technique contributed to the death of a patient. Since then, I've studied the science behind mechanical ventilation and worked in ICU and PICU. So now I want to share what I've learned, so you never make the same mistakes. To keep it simple, we will stick to basic cardiac arrest scenario using the Parapac 200 Delta, the simplest transport ventilator I know. Even if you are using a different machine, by the end of this video you will feel more confident with almost any basic transport ventilator out there. Even basic transport ventilators can look intimidating, okay? I remember that anxiety as a newbie. What helped me was starting with values I already knew. And what's the most basic ventilation parameter? Respiratory rate. According to the European Resuscitation Guidelines, adult cardiac arrest patients should be ventilated 10 times per minute. So, find the knob labeled ventilatory rate on your machine and set it to 10. On the Parapac, that's in the top right corner. Next stop, the air mix switch. When air mix is on, the ventilator gives 50% oxygen and 50% room air, useful for COPD and a few other specific cases. When air mix is off, it delivers 100% oxygen, which is exactly what you want during cardiac arrest. So, air mix off. Now let's tackle tidal volume, and I promise it will blow your mind. Tidal volume is the amount of air delivered with each breath. Too big causes vol trauma, too small leads to hypoxia, so you've got to calculate it correctly. So 6 to 8 mils per kilo of ideal body weight. But hey, how do I get ideal body weight? Here is a quick method I bet even your mentors don't know. Estimate your patient's height in centimeters and subtract 100. For example, I am 190 centimeters tall. 190 minus 100 equals 90. This is my ideal body mass. Now multiply that by 6, 7 or 8. I go with 7 as a safe middle ground. 90 times 7 equals 630. Taller people need more, vertically challenged people need less. But if you just want a reliable ballpark for most adults, 600 mils works. Now here's the issue with BVMs. How do you deliver 600 mils with a bag that it's not even labeled? How do you tailor your ventilation when all you were taught was squeeze until the chest rises? Exactly. And about that color coding on the Parapac. There's a guide linking respiratory rate to tidal volume. Ignore it. It's outdated based on an old 50 ml per kilo rule. If your ventilator also uses color charts, check the manual. Some of those machines are ancient and misleading. Why this isn't taught in med schools? I have no idea. But I know that you are now ahead of 80% of providers who are still bugging without knowing how to do it properly. Let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. 
pressure alarm. This one confuses a lot of people. Uh, there's this weird stigma around pressures. Some even call it the knob of doom. But here's the truth. You are not setting the delivered pressure. That's fixed on volume control ventilators, okay? You are just setting the alarm threshold. During CPR, set it to 60 times 100 PA. After ROSC, lower it to 50 or 40 times 100 PA. Why? Chest compressions raise intrathoracic pressure. If your alarm threshold is too low, the ventilator will keep beeping. After ROSC, pressure drops, so lower the threshold to avoid false alarms. But Alex, what if I set it too high? Well, nothing happens. The ventilator just won't alarm. What if you set it too low? It will beep constantly. Annoying, but not really dangerous. Now, here's a neat fact that will make you sound like an ICU pro. For whatever reason, the Parapac labels pressure in pascals, not centimeters of water like most other machines. So if I say set the alarm to 60, on the Parapac you will see 60 times 100 PA. Conversion is really easy. 100 PA is approximately one centimeter of water. Ask your senior paramedics if they know this. You might be surprised. The final knob is also known as the WPF knob. This one and its nickname for being super confusing. Newer ventilators just have on-off switch. Simple. But older ones like the Parapac 200 Delta might have a CMV versus CMV demand switch. Let's decode that. CMV stands for continuous mandatory ventilation. The machine delivers a fixed number of breaths at a fixed tidal volume. CMV demand, it's the same, but if the patient starts breathing on their own, the machine senses that and supports it instead of overriding. Choose CMV demand, of course. These are three most common alarms. Check this glass bulb. If it's red, your cylinder is empty or tubing is not connected. This sound, airway is blocked. Disconnect back manually and clear the obstruction from the idle or tube. This sound, tubing is kinked somewhere. Trace the whole setup. And yes, there's a silence button just below the pressure dial, but don't use it right away. If the machine is screaming at you, it's for a reason. What if your service does not use ventilators, just unlabeled PVMs? There are feedback ventilation devices on the market. Check out this video linked here. Or what if your service uses more advanced ventilators? Watch this video. My name is Alex Hetner and this was Group Call.